evening, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Mathis Show. We were off last week because of Easter, but now back. You can catch the Jimmy Mathis Show every Sunday here at TV Free Baltimore, also over at JimmyMathisLive.com. Hard to believe I've been doing this for a little over 15 years right now uh, on radio for over 10 uh, on TV, square off over with Richard Scher here now at TV Free Baltimore. And if you have followed me over the years, um, obviously we cover the news of the day, but I always try to base the topics in uh, uh, the in the Constitution and in conservatism. Um, I believe that constitutional conservatism has been a path to prosperity for uh, hundreds of millions of Americans over the years. I believe it's the reason why this country uh, has developed from a simple idea into a global superpower in a very short amount of time. And I also believe that it's the last, the only social experiment like that ever tried on the planet. And as Ronald Reagan said back when he was uh, stumping for Barry Goldwater in 1964, if this fails, there's nowhere to escape to. And as I watch the political process over the years, at all levels, at the local level, at the national level, there seems to be a basic erosion of the uh, founding building blocks of what this country was created on. Uh, basic, basic uh, things, co-equal branches of government, separation of power, uh, consent of the governed. I can go on and on. All the, the basic fundamental things that we hold dear are slowly being eroded from underneath us. And majority of Americans, I do believe, see this. One of the, the biggest building blocks of this country is local governing. Uh, the founders believed that the best governing would happen at the local level. And, and like many Marylanders here, uh, I have been very frustrated over the years on the direction of the state and where it's heading. And, and keep in mind, there have been glimmers of hope and things that we can hold on to. But generally speaking, I think as Marylanders, and I'm talking about local government right now, we are seeing our taxes go up. We are seeing an evisceration of freedom and liberty. We're seeing um, the local effects of uh, the immigration crisis, which is a national issue, but it's definitely overflowed here. Education has been an absolute disaster nationally and also here in the state of Maryland. Property rights with things like Section 8 that's now being shoved down our throat. And it was for these reasons um, when the 42nd District, the state Senate seat, uh, formerly held by Jim Broach, it was open. It was an open seat during this time uh, four years ago, three three years ago, three and a half years ago. It was an open seat that um, I had decided to run for that office. Uh, the property I lived on was right on the line. For those of you that followed me, um, I thought that I had additional time to officially make the move. Anyway, uh, short, long story short, uh, was not within the legislative district. That's not the case right now. Uh, Chris West is the incumbent. He's going to run again. Uh, I have not been very excited or pleased with what he has done over the last four years. Keep in mind, this was a state Senate seat that was held by a Democrat, Jim Broach, and a moderate Democrat, but still uh, a Democrat. This is now a win for the Republican Party. And we now have a state senator that solely uh, prides himself on bipartisanship. Bipartisanship is a way to get things done legislatively, but it by itself is not a, uh, it's not an agenda by any means. And the, one of the things that really made me, I want to read something off of his Facebook page real quick. I normally don't like to uh, source Facebook for content, but you don't hear a whole lot from the senator, so um, I'll take what I can get. This was back when Donald Trump was questioning the legitimacy of the, um, of the election, and this is not a Donald Trump issue. I understand even those within the Republican Party, locally, nationally, think he's toxic and want nothing to do with him. Others love him. I personally am a Donald Trump fan. I've pulled no punches about that. But uh, reading from Chris West, over the course of my legislative career, I have steadfastly resisted taking positions on federal issues since Donald Trump arrived on the scene. This has been very hard, but I feared that once I started to take positions on federal issues, I would not have a principled place where I could draw the line. None of these federal issues fall within my wheelhouse I just don't want to shoot from the hip and opine on issues for which I am either uninformed or at least have, or no better informed than anyone who reads the morning papers. Further, the fact that I have absolutely no influence at the federal level suggests to me 
that involving myself in federal issues would be a fool's end round. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. This is the point I'm trying to make. I want to break that sentence, that paragraph down for a second, because this is the point I've been trying to make on air for the last 15 years now. Federal issues are local issues. So you do need to be informed on them. And we see it through all aspects of local government right now. Chris West prides himself on being a champion of the environment. Well, that's the EPA. Education. We have lost local sovereignty of education. Education right now. The Department of Education with Common Core. Before that, under George Bush, it was no child left behind. We're seeing the draconian control that federal government has over states and cities because why they control the almighty dollar. The reality is the best governing happens at the local level. We, for the most part, have conceded. And I want to get back to the best governing happens at the local level. Every politician that runs, what do they talk about? We need better schools. We need better schools. What they're talking about is throwing more money at education. That is infrastructure, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, in the state of Maryland, there is one of the highest allocations of cash per pupil in any other state of the union here in Maryland. We're not talking about money. We're talking about education, curriculum, parental sovereignty when it comes to these issues. Obviously, Florida right now, front row center on that. It's also trickling through here in the state of Maryland. Taxes in Maryland, out of control. Property rights, some people pay attention to it. It's been pushed to the side with now landowners, property owners, being mandated to participate in Section 8 programs. Every aspect of our lives here right now in Maryland uh, is not in harmony with the, the, the will and the wishes of the people that it affects. So with that, I'm using this platform to let you know that I will be running for state senate in Maryland's 42nd congressional district or legislative district. Um, I will not waver on uh, my commitment to conservatism. I do not view it being a liability. And that is one of the biggest differences between Chris West and myself. He prides himself on bipartisanship and not being conservative enough. And that rhetoric, it's not unique to Senator West, but it bothers me. Because you have candidates across this country at all levels of government that run on conservatism. I've never understood this. They run on conservatism. They believe that this is the way they win elections, and a lot of them do. And then all of a sudden, the thing they won on, they believe, is a liability. And then us, the the voters, the uh, the constituents, the the American people, we buy into the rhetoric also because we hear that we're too conservative, we're too far right. I used to have this criticism when I was on the radio. And my rebuttal to that would be, what part of conservatism is too extreme for you? Is it the individual liberty? The uh, religious liberty? Is it state sovereignty? Is it limited government? Is it the Bill of Rights, the contract of the American people to their government on what the government cannot do, you go through the Bill of Rights. It's not a uh, it's not a contract of what they must do. It's limitations on that government. Is it immigration? What what part is too extreme? Again, I'm not saying that you can't have bipartisanship when it comes to legislating. Of course, you need to work with people that's negotiating 101. But you don't, however, at every turn, sacrifice core value beliefs. And that's what I see in the 42nd, and that's the district that I'm focusing on because that's the one that I live in. I wanted to just sort of get it out on this show and give my two cents about it. But with that being said, moving forward, I don't plan on bringing the race up again unless there is something very uh, sensitive or time sensitive into what we're talking about. My point on this program has never been to use it as some sort of soapbox for a political career um, I don't know if this makes any sense to you or not, but I, the, the two really are separate to me. The reason why I've done the radio shows and, and the TV show and, and this is to do a show and not to use it for a political gain. However, I am running, and I did want to tell my audience about it first. Like I said, I had filed with the Maryland Board of Elections back in February, but didn't know where I was going to end up or if I was going to withdraw um, until everything got resolved and ran through the courts, and they're still figuring it out. So, <laughs> still a lot of candidates. Uh, if you look at the Board of Elections website, 
or have not uh, not been reassigned to whatever districts that they'll be in. But with that being said, um, if you live in the 42nd, if you can figure out where that is right now, because <laughs> a lot of people are still learning the lines, um, I would appreciate your support. And I think that I have proven over the last 15 years that I have been a consistent voice when it comes to conservatism, that um, even at times when it wasn't popular, and, and one of the things I, I referenced and I was very proud of was back in 2015, when the city was going through the horrific days of the riots, everybody was turning their backs on the police. And it was the beginning of sort of this war on law enforcement. My concern on that was uh, was very simple. First of all, you're going to push out quality veteran officers. And second of all, you're going to make it very difficult to recruit that next generation of officer. That's what you're seeing within the city, and you're seeing it even in counties before where they never had an issue with recruiting. You're seeing it in Anne Arundel County, Howard County, and Baltimore County. Again, property rights, a huge thing with me. The fact that my opponent would support mandating Section 8 shows what a lack of understanding he has when it comes to conservatism, what an attack that is on basic property rights. I don't have a problem with the Section 8 program per se, but a problem with it being mandated that property owners need to participate in it and above all is education and i just find it incredibly frustrating that when we're talking about education the only thing that we're talking about is more money in rebuilding schools fixing schools air conditioners in schools yes that's in part of it obviously you have to have a building and you need books and you have to pay for the teachers but that is infrastructure and operating expenses that by itself is not education and for those parents out there that have kids in k through 12 and scratch that, the universities are becoming the exact same thing. But, but K through 12, where we're dealing with children, the actual education that our children is getting is frightening. And the fact that parents can't even get hold of a curriculum and the limited accountability that the schools have uh, is frightening. So if elected, I understand I would be one Republican in the state legislature, uh, but I would be a consistent voice. I would focus on... Uh, constituency service, and I absolutely would do what I've done over the last 15 years, which is to make the case on why conservatism and why the Republican Party, what we stand for, why it matters, and why we don't want to abandon it. So I will leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back to our regular show next week. Like I said, I'm not going to use this as a, if elected, this is what I would do uh, platform. That's not, uh, that's not the purpose of it. That's not why I put the amount of work that I do into the show. I always uh, treasure, appreciate the time and all the support that I've gotten here on the program uh, over the last few short weeks that we've done it. It's really been it's really been overwhelming. So again, you can see past episodes at JimmyMathisLive.com uh, the audio podcast. We were a week delayed on that too. had some technical issues but that site should be pretty much fully up and running and for the campaign, if you want to check that out give me Jimmy.com and that is now up. Oh, real quick before I let you go. Also, we are holding our kickoff event on May 12th at Brennan Circuses off of Chesapeake and Delaware Avenue, uh, right in the heart of Towson, Brennan Circuses. Uh, they've been a big fan of mine over the years. Uh, 6 to 8 o'clock is where we'll be holding our, our kickoff event. You can email me at jimmymathislive.com. It's also on our calendar page there. But it would be great for you to come out. And uh, love to celebrate with everybody. Everyone have a wonderful week. We will see you back here next Sunday for the Jimmy Mathis Show.